what's going on guys welcome back to the channel this raggedy thing is having problems again and uh, boy I'm about to get frustrated I uh, hauled a load out to Dallas uh, yesterday thought everything was good I changed the oil uh, fixed the water leak uh, made sure the transmission was full of oil whenever over everything greased it and uh, I noticed before I left there was an oil leak which this thing constantly has oil leaks I didn't think it was that bad and, and, and it was a little bit over full on oil so I thought that may have been what it was because it leaks uh, when you get it a little bit over full on oil it'll leak until it gets down a little lower and then it'll quit leaking but anyway uh, on the way home I uh, noticed my jake brakes quit working and uh, I didn't think much about it, I said, well, I'll take a look at it when it gets to the house. And uh, so I got about four or five miles from my house there and made my turn onto my road. And uh, the low oil pressure light came on and the buzzer went to going off for about two seconds. And then uh, it quit doing it. So it had gotten low enough on oil that I guess when I made the turn, the oil sloshed over to one side of the pan. And, uh, you know, it made the uh, low oil pressure uh, one go off uh, so I only live about four miles down the road from where I turned that where that happened at so I come on to the house and uh, I got here and uh, I checked the oil it wasn't touching on the stick of course I added five gallons of oil to it so it, it, it lost five gallons of oil on that trip to Dallas and back so what I found was is the uh, this cover right here the engine uh, timing cover right here on the front of the motor is leaking down on the bottom. I'm gonna have to get out on the creeper to show you this, but it's leaking down here. Right, it's leaking right there where your uh, engine mount, right there, let me zoom it in for you. You see where I put that JB weld on there? The gasket right there between the block and the timing cover is leaking and it is pouring oil. Uh, I had it sitting here idling, just just uh, just trying to look at it for like 15, 20 minutes, and you see the puddle of oil there on the floor, and uh, it's got some lacquer thinner mixed in that now because I, I washed this off with lacquer thinner to try to put this JB Quick on it, a JB Weld on it, and I pressure washed it and everything, got it got it really clean because the whole underside of this truck is is just soaked with oil all under here, and. Uh, I would really like to try to fix this the correct way, but it's just not, it's just not really feasible at this point because uh, in order to get that uh, cover off right there, let me show you what you gotta do. All right, in order to get this cover off here, you've got to pull the hood off, you gotta pull the radiator, the intercooler, uh, the fan trail, the fan, the whole nine yards, the timing gears, and everything. I don't even have the tools to do this. Do this with. You got to have a, you got to have a timing pin that goes in the side of your block that pins the crank, and you got to have two timing wedges to to, uh, to wedge your camshafts in order to do this. And uh, from what I've read on the internet, this is a really expensive job to have a shop to do, as you can tell why, uh, because you're looking at two or three thousand dollars in just labor in order to get this thing off to fix a freaking 50 or 75 dollar gasket or whatever but uh it's leaking right behind that uh right behind that mount right there and uh, i put some jb quick on it and what i'm gonna do now is i've got some uh some bed liner over there and i'm gonna pour some bed liner down in there behind that and try to let it run down that gasket and coat it with bed liner and uh see if that don't slow it down plug it up something or other because uh looking at doing this myself i'm looking at at least two weeks of downtime whether i do it myself or our shop does it i'm looking at two weeks of downtime plus materials and if shop does it then i'm looking at you know labor so this is this is really expensive and uh to do you know counting your downtime and everything this is this is expensive repair and so I'm trying to patch job it to see, and I ordered a case of uh, AT205 reseal. Uh, I've used that before and it slowed the leaks down because this, this motor also have leaks 
uh, on the head gasket. They were known for that. I don't know if you can see uh, up in there right there, but the head gasket is right up in there. And it leaks oil from there too. And uh, it got real bad one time and I ordered that, uh, that AT205 reseal and put some of that in here. And it takes about eight bottles because things hold so much oil. And uh, it slowed that down almost to a complete stop. And I don't know how many thousands of miles that's been ago, but uh, I'm gonna put some more in it and see if it don't slow this down. But uh, <clears throat> nobody keeps that stuff around here, so I have to order it. And with it being uh, around Christmas, it'll probably be two weeks before I can get it uh, without paying, you know, a ridiculous as much for the shipping as the whole case of the stuff cost. Uh, so I'm gonna try to pour some bed liner down here. Got some epoxy, that epoxy base you mix part A and part B bed liner down here that stuff's got chunks of rubber and I'm hoping it'll plug the gasket up right there because it's not a pressure leak it's just oil slinging leak right there and it's uh, slinging the oil out you know when you run down the road and the gears are turning in there it's slinging that oil up through that uh, through the broken gasket there or whatever and uh, oil's going everywhere so uh, I'm trying to patch job it like I say to keep to keep running because uh, it's going to be a, such an expensive repair and, and the downtime and everything. But uh, at least I didn't burn the motor up, you know, uh, or at least yet. Uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping uh, quite a bit of oil in the truck uh, now that i got this problem going on, on top of the problem I just had with the transmission. And uh, I've looked at some other trucks and stuff, and, uh, you know, I'm just not convinced that I wouldn't have the same issues with those trucks. And even the new truck with all the emission systems and, and the stories I'm hearing on the uh, on the new trucks with all the emissions, and, and you're paying a truck note and it's broke down in the shop. That, that's how you go bankrupt. You know, if you got a, a $2,500 a month freaking truck note and it's broke down and it's in the shop for two months, uh, you know, in and out, back and forth, uh, and you're not working, you can't pay that. The, you know, it just don't work. So uh, I'm just gonna try to patch job this I guess and, and try to keep it rolling and, and maybe buy a used truck at some point but I don't know I'm kind of afraid of them as well you know uh, because you can drop six to eight thousand dollars in a used truck quick uh, you know you buy one and the turbo wore out and you got to put a turbo on it you got to put brakes on it you got to put this on it you got to put that on it I mean it just don't end so uh, anyway I'm on uh Put some of this bed liner on here and let it dry and hopefully that will uh slow this down and maybe that at205 will kind of finish sealing it up is what i'm hoping for so uh let me get some bed liner on this all right guys this is the leftover bed liner i got here and this is the uh professional grade uh rust oleum truck bed coating you got the part a and you got the part b epoxy here and uh, I've cleaned that off with a lacquer thinner over there and I'm gonna mix this up and I'm hoping this stuff will bond pretty good and it'll seal that gasket up and then I'm putting the AT205 reseal in there on top of it hopefully that will cure this uh, and for you guys that don't know you're new to the channel I run regional freight I'm never over 500 miles away from the house so it's not like I'm running east to west uh, like a lot of you guys do this 2,000 miles away you're gone for three months at a time it's not like that I run flatbed I run loaded out there drop my load and come back empty so you know it, it's less important I guess in other words uh, you know if I if I develop an oil leak by doing this on the road you know it's a good chance that I won't be over two to three hundred miles from the house and I can uh, pour enough oil in it to get back home and then put it in the shop and fix it right if that happens it's not like I'm uh, you know 2,000 miles from home and and you know then you got to fix it there so that's the reason I'm doing this if I was running east to west I probably wouldn't even be attempting this uh, I would have it put in a shop and do it right but uh, I run flatbed freight and you know the loads are just not there to it's not it's not consistent enough especially being right here in the middle of winter uh, you know, flatbed stuff is, is, is lumber, mainly building products, and you're not building in the middle of the winter, so uh, work gets a little slow. And uh, you know, I hate to, I hate to sink that much money in here, and then the trucks just sitting in the yard, you know. 
So we're going to do it this way. We're going to run some more and then, uh, you know, might look at getting another truck or whatever. Just see how this goes. Uh, I just run the transmission low on fluid, had a transmission line come loose. And uh, so I'm not even sure. I've only made one load since then. So I'm not even sure the transmission is going to hold up. So I don't want to sink, you know, four grand in the motor fixing the oil leak and then the transmission go out in two weeks. You know, that's, you know, then I done dropped, you know, another eight or 10 in the transmission. You know, I could have bought another used truck or something. So anyway, that's why I'm doing this. Uh, for those of you that's new to the channel and uh, you're wondering what is this guy doing? So anyway, I'm gonna mix this up and we're gonna put it on there. All right, guys, I got the bed liner on there. You can see down in there. Made a heck of a mess doing so. But I tried to get it all in behind right there and behind that mount uh, bracket because that's where the gasket's leaking at there and running down. And uh, on the bottom there, if I can show you, right there on the bottom where that little gap is right there, I tried to push it up in, up in between there, right there. So hopefully that stuff will harden and I'm not gonna crank the truck until it hardens. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, hook my pickup on it and, and roll it back outside to close the shop up here and I'm gonna let that set uh, overnight and uh, hopefully that'll seal the oil leak up and uh, that bed liner is pretty durable stuff you know it's got uh got rubber coating in it so it'd be really sweet if uh, that cured my oil leak, and then I'm still putting the AT205 reseal in there, which uh, most of you know what that is. For those of you who don't, I'll put a link uh, to it in the description, uh, and you can uh, check it out and read the reviews on it and stuff. Uh, pretty much, it's uh, you mix it with your uh, engine oil, differential fluid, power steering fluid, or whatever, and uh, if you have a seal, seal leak, it will recondition that seal, if it's not too bad, and uh, seal the leak. Uh, you know, it don't work all the time, but uh, it does work a good bit of the time and can save you thousands of dollars and uh, something other that's leaking that, uh, you know, you got to take to a mechanic and tear it all apart and all that. So anyway, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, if anybody's interested. And uh, I'll let you guys know what the results are on this bed liner. And hopefully this will seal this oil leak up right here and I won't have any more trouble with it for quite some time. All right guys, this is the next day and uh, I've let the epoxy dry and I've had the truck out here running for probably 30, 45 minutes or so. It is still leaking, but it's leaking from up higher now uh, <clears throat> where I didn't get the bed liner. You see in the hole there where I got it real good in there it doesn't appear to be leaking in there any longer it is leaking uh up above see where the black the really black shiny part is running across uh it's leaking above it now up there but it's not leaking near as bad as it was um so i may clean that off and uh put some more bed liner up there i didn't really put any up there uh because i didn't think it was leaking up there because it was leaking so much oil on the bottom uh, is what I was concerned with. I didn't know that that up there was leaking, but anyway, uh, so far with it sitting here running, I've got this little drop here that's about, that's about an inch across. And before in the same time period, I had like a, a 10 inch puddle here. Uh, so that's definitely a whole lot better than what I had. And, uh, like I say, I'll probably I'll probably put a little more of that uh, bed liner on there and uh, let it dry uh, when I get back. I got to go to the same place that I, I come from last time when I lost the five gallons of oil. So I'm going to the same place, so it'll be the same mileage and everything. So uh, I will uh, know about uh, you know how much I slowed the leak down by that. But uh, anyway. I'll update you guys when I get back. Well, what's going on guys? I got back. I made uh, two trips out to Dallas and back after I put the uh, epoxy bed liner in a can on there. Uh, 
you know, the brush on type or roll on, whichever. And uh, I've used about, I would say a gallon, gallon and a half of oil in two trips versus five gallons in one trip. So that definitely helped slow it down. Uh, I went and got a can of uh, spray on bed liner and I've put some of that on it. I haven't made a trip with it yet, but I think it further helped reduce it. And in the meantime, my uh, AT205 reseal come in. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that in there. But first I wanna show you what I did with that bed liner here. And how well you're gonna be able to see. Maybe you can see down in there pretty good. You can see how I coated it all over in there where it was leaking. If I can show you down in this way. I sprayed it everywhere I could on that on that uh, seam down in there. And uh, hopefully that will further help slow it down. I sprayed some along the, uh, along the pan gasket there as well. Uh, you know, just because I had some. And uh, anyway, hopefully it'll help seal it up a little bit. I uh, did notice on the other side, it looks like it's starting to seep a little bit over there as well. And uh, I also see uh, up in here behind the compressor, there's some oil starting to seep there also. And it was leaking there one time before. And uh, I bought some of that AT205 reseal that you add to your oil. And uh, it caused it to stop leaking. And that's probably been, I'm not sure, it may have been close to 100,000 miles ago. And uh, so I'm going to put some more in it now. All right, guys, I got my uh, AT205 reseal that I ordered here, a whole case of it. And uh, one bottle uh, treats up to six quarts. That's what it says there on the label. That's what the bottle looks like. And it's for engine, transmission, differential, power steering, hydraulic systems. It says do not use in a brake system. Anyway, this is what I used last time, and I had some pretty good results out of it, so I ordered some more. And... Uh, we're going to put about 10 bottles in here, I think. Uh, should do the trick. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.